Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming to the afternoon to listen to my speech. This is my first Drupal Camps uh, presentation. So excuse me by language, because the English is not my first language. Sometimes my pronunciation may be not perfect. Uh, just uh, uh, tell me if I'm, I'm not talking loud enough, if you not hear me. So my name is Yen. I'm working for Digital Kina. I'm the development manager over there. And people probably over here us like, all those animals floating around. So, <laughs> how to pronounce it? It's, it pronounced echina, not echina, not like, it's echina. What is echina? It's um, Australian and eater animal. This is very unique, resourceful, adaptive. That's our, the company mascot. <laughs> Where are we located? We're located in Linda, Ontario. We have currently 40 employees. Uh, welcome to everyone to join us in Lentor, Ontario to give a tour. We have a beautiful office over there. And we love Drupal. That's here today. We want to talk about how to build a Drupal team, a cohesive Drupal team, and what skill set they need and for the Drupal team and what uh, roles they're going to play. And the second one, I'm going to talk about Drupal team recruitment strategies, how to hire the Drupal talent. My third topic will be how to assembling and maintain Drupal teams that performs. So the first one, Drupal project team roles and skill set. I love Smurfs. Um, people in here in Kenya know <laughs> I like Smurfs. And what's like in common with Drupal and Smurfs, not just because they're both blue, they're also born in Belgium. And there's a three things I love from Belgium. Drupal, Smurfs, and Belgian chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> and Smurfs are unique. Each character is a little bit different. I have five Smurfs here. A small information project team needs five rows. At least minimum, you need two rows. A technical lead and project manager. And if you project a little bit slightly bigger, even though it's still small, you can have a junior developer on your team, a seamer or slash web de designer and the QA person, or person or who could be combined with one of the roles. In early age in Kenya, when we only have 10 people that time, our PM is our QA person. They did an amazing job. I can't believe when I joined the Kenya six years ago, our PM had to do QAs. And now we are 40, we have automated testing. And we have 20 developers now I'm managing. And so with the team is growing and the, the dynamic changing. This is for fit for small projects. How many of you here are from web agencies? Can you raise your hand? And how many people here are from like in-house, like uh, you're working for a Drupal in-house? Okay. How many people here are managers? Okay. It's interesting for small teams, for in-house, you already have a smaller team. And for the web agencies, you could start with a 10, people Drupal shop, or you could go to 40 and 100 Drupal shop. And the, your project team is slightly different because the size of your company, also the size of your need for your projects. Uh, in-house, maybe you don't have many people in-house, like five and 10, and then you sometimes hire contracts like us to help you to support to more complex task. But as every company, like a web company, grows and you're getting bigger project. And what's your large team going to look like for a project team? You get more roles. And in your technical team, you have technical architect and technical lead. You have senior developers or intermediate developers, and you have a junior developers. Why we have junior developers in the small implements team, also in the large? You need junior developers because you know, we need to train people. We need to get entry level people from the college to learn Drupal. Drupal is hard to find, especially in Linda, Ontario is small and there's not a lot of Drupal developers. So we start to train our own Drupal developers from the people right from the college. They're really good with front end, they're really good with back end. All we need to do is get them on board with Drupal. So we also you take workload of the senior developers and the uh, technical leads because you don't want to overload somebody and you burn somebody out with so much work. So you want to even out the work between the senior and the entry and get both learning time. 
And also you guys, similar in web designers, in Kina we have front end, also our web designers. They can do designs in their browser. They not just know how to seem, they know how the UI prettiness, they can do responsible design, they can do mobiles. And because of responsive design, a lot of time, it's much easier you can design the browser. And um, in large team, you can add the functional manager like myself, like Dell manager. Dell manager mostly focus on people, not much focus on the project. They leave the technical stuff to the technical architect. I'm being senior developer, one of the initial one joined Kina for two years. After two years, I'm be promoted Dell manager to helping developer to grow. And in the beginning, when we were smaller, I was doing 70 coding, 30% management, then changed to 50 to 50, and then two, three years ago, we ch I changed to no coding at all. So I can't be saying, like, I can't really do a presentation about module development because I haven't touched module development for three years. <laughs> but I know Drupal well enough because I was using Drupal 7 for many years. I've been doing from front end to back end, so I know all the spectrum of the, our people, the skill set. And we have a project manager team on the large scale projects. Engage manager, it's a, it, in Kina we call them account managers. Um, the word engage manager, this I borrowed from um, some books I learned from uh, while doing some research. And you have project managers, you have a QA person, or uh, come entire team share some of the QA roles. And plus automated testing, you can a little bit time out there. And look at this Smurf, we got a bigger team here, there's a lead. <laughs> and the skill set development. Um, those are not specific to Drupal, uh, like PHP, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and version control like Git, and MySQL infrastructure. And the skill set requirement for each rows are slightly different. That's the difference between technical architects and the seniors and the upper back and front end, the technical architect is seem an expert on the most back end, only slightly like intermediate on the CSS and JavaScript. They are really good with infrastructure. What's infrastructure is mostly about server configuration, caching, understanding what's performance. And we have a lot of uh, good back end, they are really in depth in those. And of course, if you use Archaea or Pentium, they save you lots of time on the DevOps stuff. And JavaScript is requirements like throughout in our front end developer in Kina we call mid end. They're highly skillful in the JavaScript level. Uh, mid end is probably only in Kina, so I didn't put here. In Kina we have a front end, mid end, and back end. What mid end means is usually the people who graduate from multimedia de design that really good with uh, front end technology. They can do theming. They can do module development even. They're really good with JavaScript. Only thing you really they don't do is design the browser or complex like um, uh, complex migrations. But they are in between, they're very flexible. They can back the front end people up when front end people like a little bit on vacation or say so they can back up the back end people up. So we have each team, you really have one front end, one back end, but we two had two mid end. So those are Drupal specific skills here is the first, uh, well, Drupal community involvement uh, is you can, even you don't have to be a coder to involve Drupal community. Uh, one time Scott is teaching me how to write uh, issue code Drupal, like the summary. I thought this will be easy. I can help, you know, Drupal community by rewrite issue summary. After I tried one, it would take me like two hours because I had to read every single comments and try to summary back and take screenshots. You had to really understand the issue. But that was really helpful. After I did re issue the summary and when Dries read it, it was like, oh, this is like really good, right? And you don't have to be technical to get involved in the Drupal community. And there is a content modeling and set building and the theming, architect and planning and custom module development and performance security. Those roles are very Drupal specific. So the site building part and content modeling part, you already shared between the seamer and the backend. Um, we don't really have one person only do site building because for the front developer, you need to know site building. For the module developer, you need no site building. So it's a, like a shared role. And the requirements for each role, project managers or the visual designer, the junior developer, the developers are different. 
Uh, this chart, uh, I didn't make it up, uh, I borrowed actually from an ebook Alkia published a couple years ago uh, talking about the Drupal Rose. Uh, you can check it out on Alkia's, uh, if you're just searching Drupal Teams, you can find this. So how many people, so we know the roles and skill set, how many people you think you need in a uh, Drupal team? Probably less than 10. It doesn't matter how big it is, 10 is a good number or less than 10. You don't want to get too many people. <coughs> I'll tell you why later. Uh, even number you already work good, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 per project. A lot of people are thinking, and the team coach, you're probably are thinking more people probably can deliver a faster product. I'll tell you a story, say, a story uh, I find really intriguing. I heard a few presentations in the Drupal community talk about, it's called the project of the baby would be delivered. A client is the one who doesn't know why they even want the baby. A project manager is a person thinking, a woman, if I put nine women, they can deliver this baby in one month. <laughs> and designer, what well, design baby with three arms and then one leg inside ask developer, is that doable? And <laughs> a developer is a person thinking, this baby only take a four months to get you know, delivered or maybe 18 months. And the tester is the person who always tells his wife, this is not the right baby. <laughs> <laughs> I like to use this story because it doesn't mean you put more people in a team, you're gonna produce a much higher quality project or faster. You need each row and each node, yes, they do have their backup rows, but you only need, you want them to concentrate on a bigger project. You don't want to get too many people in one project team. I'm not talking about team as the entire company, I'm talking like a project specifically. And it's easy to communicate when you have less people. Uh, before I move on to the team build uh, hiring, I'll talk about why is even numbers. This is something I didn't put in the slide because I think this is my own theory. Uh, I think two people, four people, six, eight, just work better. Why? Look at friends. You know, anybody watch Friends here? Or <laughs> there's six people, right? They always, you know, there's always the equal, or like Sex and City, there's four girls. Why is it even number? Because they work better. Like two, two of them can go out, like even the outbursts, two, two, they work together really well, the companies see each other, and four people good. When well, you have three, you know, sometimes I already thought front end, one front end, one mid end, one back end, perfect team. But sometimes that doesn't work out. I feel like there's one person always do a slightly more, or so, like it's, there's the confusion. Usually like even number work well. But this is my own series, so I didn't, I'm kind of afraid to put in the slide. <laughs> if you said my actually odd number team work much better, then I don't have a proof. So. <laughs> and you do need a coach. Why you need a coach? Coach is not the person who really serve the client. They are the person who serve the people on the team. They make the team very content exclusive, like a cheerleaders, and like a sports. I don't really watch that much sports, but I watch a soccer, like a live soccer when I was younger. There's always a coach, they're not stars. They're not like the Drupal developer does, the talent stars. They're the coach, they're behind the scenes. Maybe they used to be stars, but now they're back on the field. They're helping the team and identify their strengths and help the team be successful. And those people focus on people are not focused on project or client. A lot of company probably want to think, that's all the managers who focus on the clients, not focus on the people who work for you. Why are you focus on the people? Because those people who work in a team, they are the frontline people. They're going to make the client feel good if they are happy, right? So your, your coach is focused on the people. So now that's based, so why we find those talent people? I'm going to talk about next. So there's five steps to finding your Drupal developers. Review your current needs. Depends on how big the uh, size of your organization, what you need. Review the people you already have. Don't just go out and say, you know, I'm gonna hire a branch, like a new batch of people. Gonna be wonderful. The grass is always greener on another side, right? Like the other developers look so cool. Let's replace all our developers where they have. That's not happening. <laughs> you should look at the people you already have and look at the people like, What's the people already have? What are their strengths? Can I find the compensating their skills that people to in, help them to learn? And 
Uh, very often, you can't find the people who are just make your need. So you really identify your need and think about it. Don't just find anybody randomly, right? Define your requirements and what you need is a backend or mid-end, or you don't know yet, is a full stack. It could be a Drupal developer who uh, have many years experience in the Drupal community, and maybe you need that. Or you maybe just need entry because you need, there's a lot of workload, you want to bring somebody in to learn how you work and train them. And maybe you want to meet intermediate people who are already know Drupal, but just not you know, uh, to the senior level yet, and you want to bring them in. So you need to know your needs before you hire them. And why do you nice with the job descriptions? If you just say, I want a backend developer, a Drupal module developer, it's, you narrow your job description. You, sh you could pay post like a Drupal job. That way you get more applications. And then once you talk to them, you'll find out what they actually really good at it or what they want to focus on. And sometimes in the like company like us in London, Ontario, to find in Drupal people is hard. So you already will put PHP backend developers or frontend developers. That way when you're posting, you get more applications and you can talk to them, do interesting open source technology. There's a lot of talent people that are good with frontend or backend and they can learn Drupal. I know it's a little bit learning curve for Drupal 7 Special 6, but Drupal is coming out and Go to the Symphony uh, community. Find your backend developer over there. It must be easier because if people already understand Symphony, it will be easy for them to adopt in Drupal 8. And they already know Composer. They already know the latest technology. They already know how to work object-oriented PHP. And you don't need to worry about it. They had to like take a long time to learn Drupal. So that's why I really love Drupal 8, right? And also your it's widening your front end as well for this Drupal 8 because you're no longer tied to the Drupalness of the arrays and you get Twig and you get all the services. You get JSON. You can hire more people who have more skill set not specific to Drupal. And where to post your jobs? Uh, you can post in the Drupal uh, job board and you can post the Drupal job newsletter you subscribe to if it's Drupal Pacific or post on your LinkedIn and that sometimes get you better results because they were cl close to the people who are already in that um, parameter and the uh, LinkedIn get really smart and they'll present you at right in front of the people may looking for the job and have exactly the needs you have and the next step the last step is for evaluate the applications. Uh, usually we ask for linking profiles. We don't ask traditional resume anymore. Um, that way we can see the person, you know, the historical and network, and the really about where they, do they have a GitHub if they are a developer who already out of school a couple of years. Don't require too much out of fun, like a, you know, the college student saying you have everything. Sometimes college students maybe just have a website, because that's good enough. And you want to get their website and take a look at their code. And if they don't have a website, for some people have seen it or maybe they don't have a blog, they haven't do their, redo their website for years, like myself. My websites have one splash page for the past few years. I haven't even taken it down. And what do you ask them? Like code resource, like core source you can review. And I don't review the core source if it's front end. I ask our front end lead to review the core source. If it's a module, I'll ask our back end to review the module for me and ask them, what do you think? What is their code good? And but if for like people just graduate from college, do you really only look at their code source and their resume? Because they, well, you, you want to look, you can ask preference from their professors and the classmates and how they work. So that's a, like a five step to hiring. So what's important when I hire people? Honesty is the most important thing when for you're looking for a candidate. And hardworking, team player, passionate about the technology they're using, and self-motivated. Nothing better than self-motivated. And there's people motivated by different things, but if they're self-motivated, it's, it's better to easy to work with. And the communication skill set, they don't have to be like, like our PMs that super in communication. They all just need to communicate well enough internally, and they can comfortably talk about tickets and talk about issues. And code qualities, 
and the last is the skill set and work experience. Work experience will gain a bunch of the years and skill set can be trained. But the top for soft skill set is really hard to train once you hire the person, right? I love this quote. Um, Dries one time mentioned his blog post too, that's how I can hire people too. Like hiring promote the first on the base of integrity and second on motivation, third on capability, fourth for understanding, fifth for knowledge. And the last and last is the experience. People uh, had a lot of arguments on Dries' blog about, you know, people's experience is good. Yes, experience is good, but you also need all the other things. Like without honesty, really, it's really hard to work as a huge team. You're not a solo developer anymore. So you talk a lot of hiring, you find your first, we identified the Drupal team roles and skill set, and we hire those people. So now the next, the very important step is building the team, maintain the team, and then make team perform. That's probably the most important part of the team. The first one is very important for building team buildings, individual empowerment. This is in the very talented um, web developers or creatives. In individual empowerment is very important. They are, everybody should take responsibility for their own performance 100%. They are not like traditional factory workers and being told there's a Zamblin line, you're just doing this. Developers usually very creative too. They want to, be, that's why they pick this job, right? They want to make an impact. They want to feel fulfillment. What make them feel fulfillment? Yes, the compensation salary, that's meet their basic needs. Once they bypass that, they can meet their salary, meet their lifestyle. What they like important to them is the value, the impact they can make to their projects and to their companies. And the project they work, sometimes the more important and is that their interest. And people are not resource. I made this mistake. I have a spreadsheet called resource scheduling. And I think if my resource going to be perfect, schedule them out. But very quickly I find out people are not resources. They're not a piece of material you can swap and exchange real quickly. And just like, okay, A doesn't work, let's jump with B in. It doesn't work that way. Pe people are human beings. First of all, you re respect them. They are not resources. Everybody is different. Even the front end, in between my front end, they have different interests. They have different strengths. And some, everybody is slightly bit different. You need to find their needs. And put their strengths and avoid their weakness. Strengths is something they're good at it. A lot of time we do performance uh, reviews and the traditional of the I improve you, this improve that, it's something like their character they can't change. Why focus on that? Let's focus on their what they're good at it and tell them how you can make maximum what you're good at it to the highest level. Uh, people change slowly on by their own wills, not change by you telling them to improve their weakness. And I can't even change my own sound. My son says after part he's five, I think his character said, he's, on his, yeah, he's pretty stubborn. I can't tell him to change the way I want. So only person you can change is yourself. <laughs> and difference between groups and teams. A team growing and learning together as a team, not just as group individuals. And putting team talent people together doesn't mean you're going to have a talent team. Look at this. There's the individuals, they all go have a different goals. So the results are all different, very small. And only time you get a team focused on one result, they all work together, you get big results. So on the right side is a team, on this side just a group of people. So you need to recognize what is the difference between a good team and a group of people. Fully functional product team has those attributes common goals, and clear expected results that have been agreed up on. Not just you, what you told them to, is actually the operator agree up themselves. And mutual accountable responsibilities, and neutral learning, and the community skill set. And clear identifying responsibility and roles, frequent open communication, sharing ideas, mutual respects, accept and value the differences, and sharing the success. 
common skill set is very important. Sometimes people will say, I'm really good at this. It's, I'm really not good at that, but I'm kind of afraid to share my weakness with my teammates. But you want to share, because sometimes your teammates, what you're not good at, it, actually is the opposite of somebody good at it, and they actually enjoy doing that. Don't assume just because you don't like doing it and nobody else likes doing it. That's why a team work together, you can achieve big things. And sharing ideas and respect each other and then recognize you are different. You don't have to be the same. You are not clones. Uh, talk with clones, I had a joke uh, like a couple of years ago, like, well, in the past few years, every time we get busy, I said, let's clone somebody. <laughs> you know, that friend is like, so good, can I clone you? And every time, the developer said, oh, the moment you mention clone somebody, I feel like we are overloaded. <laughs> so don't clone people and hire people, <laughs> hire people that are different. There is this fourth stage when you're building a team. This is a, like in the project management like books for years. And this, I think these days still applies. It applies to any team, not just the Drupal project team. I put Drupal just because it's match this environment. <laughs> uh, there's a fourth stage like forming, storming, norming, and performing. So when you're forming a team, your result is it's kind of mid-low and you're gonna go to a storm. Any team when you form together, there's gonna be conflict. You need to resolve the conflict as soon as possible, then the storm more to norm, and then slowly go to perform again. So you need to give the time. The team just assembling together. Over years, we have been changing team structures. Every couple months, we say, oh, you know, this, this doesn't work out. Let's do another way. So every time I redoing, when we're redoing that, we form again, storm again, norm again, we perform again. And every time you add a new team member to your team, it starts right from the beginning. It start to form and storm and norm, and then go to performance. So just pay attention with that and be patient and work with your team to achieve that performing stage. And once you hit that stage, don't think you're gonna stay there forever because the project change. You may have to disassemble this project team and change another. So you just start all again. So all you can do is shorten the time from forming to performing. What, how, how to short that time from, you know, storming stage, let bypass that, then go to the performing stage. The very important is trust, empower both individuals and team, and clear grab on goals, and good planning and system, and the leader who support the process, and the empathy communication. Uh, empathy communication is a thing for others, because we are different individuals. My background, I'm Chinese, I'm immigrant, for 15 years ago, and my culture, that background is a little bit different. And my team is very something. I'm not, sometimes they're making, you know, North American jokes I don't understand, but they, <laughs> they're just like, okay, we all know you're different. But, you know, I sometimes I'm thinking, is this like culture different? It could be just generation difference. But everybody's different. Keep, keep the empathy in mind when you're thinking for others. And, and conflicts are resolved quickly. Don't leave it. Something you, you feel there's a conflict, try to resolve it right away. And don't try to use you word when you resolve a conflict. Try to use like, I see this as an issue, but maybe you see it differently. And then again, I use you. It's very hard to want to use you. <laughs> because when you're using you, there's uh, something I learned from the leadership program. It's become personal. You try to attack in this person, it's about you. So sometimes if you both look at this is the issue, we both look together, we can solve together. It's not about you or me, so that way you can solve the conflict quicker. Accountability and training, we try to onboarding our new developer by bringing the co-ops and internship. We tried to, I was talking to Matt early on how to train internship. We gave him the video to watch. Uh, I think next time we need to do a little bit better on that. Um, pa be patient and flexible and creative thinking and maintain change, like managing the change effectively. Because when you're forming a team, there's going to be a lot of change happening. So I persistently going to talk about just 
trust right now. Why to put trust out? Trust is the most important when you form a team from the beginning stage. So how to gain the trust? How to gain trust from each other? Clarify your committee commitment you know, of term expectation and deadlines. If you don't tell people what is project deadline and just expecting them to know about it, that's not right, right? And they're getting to know the people and how they feel. How they feel sometimes is very important. People will forgot what you say, what you do, but they never forgot what, how you made them feel. So be sensitive, especially if you are the manager or leadership, and utilize the talent of the people and understand what their strong strengths is and utilize that. And asking inputs and assistance, it's great to ask help. I get my daughter help me do all type of things. And in the beginning, I wasn't delegate enough. And now I'm just getting them to help me. And they know I'm not really good with module down minimal. And I'll just ask them to help me. So what do you think? What's your ideas? Can you help me estimate this? Sometimes maybe you get estimate a little bit too low or too high. But you get assistance. You ask them help. You have some input. And they feel very valued. And apologize when you make a mistake. Nobody's perfect, right? We all make mistakes. We maybe didn't follow through something we said. Then we just make apologize to them. And to be honest, tell them why we didn't make the mistake. And listen to people. Listening is a great skill set to have. And thanks everybody sitting here to listen to me talk. This is a great. <laughs> I like talk, but uh, I was like, did I talk too much? But this is a presentation, so I could talk. <laughs> Take care of little things and take, make the positive differences. Sometimes um, it's just a little words when people do something achieved really good. You want to say thanks to them. Thanks doesn't cost you anything. Thanks is great and people feel, you know, be valued. And being honest and displayed integrity is very important as everybody. So that's you gain. There's a some fact. There's more fact beyond this to gain the trust. Once you Gain the trust with your team members, everybody support each other. Even sometimes you had a bad day and your team will back you up. Another thing is because when you form a team, the team start changing. There's some myth of fact about change. About a team, uh, a myth is more information will help people change. Nope. The right information will help people change. This is a interesting I learned uh, from a recent article I, I read on the LinkedIn. We are changing our teams right now. We constantly changing. We try to, you know, change the team structure to fit the bigger clients. And we're thinking maybe, I was thinking, if I get information, people are not going to understand the change importances. But I was about to read this, like, red information, how people change. It's not everything you share is about the right amount what important information you share. And another myth is people don't like change. Wrong again. People don't like change imposed upon them. If you involve the people in the change, you ask their feedback, you ask them for their feels, then they feel like I'm a part of this change. I feel pumped for this change. And another myth is change is event. It's like a birthday, a wedding. It starts somewhere, it will have a stops. No, that's wrong again. Change is a constantly. Like team changing is constant. There is no end. There is no perfect thing. There is a beginning. Now the team is changed to perfect. In the end, to summarizing what I say is the, the trust, the belief is important. This is a human psychology. Uh, another thing I learned from the leadership program. What do you believe? it could often change your attitude. And your attitude is going to affect your behaviors. And your behaviors are going to reflect on your result. And the result is going to reinforce you to believe something you believe in the beginning. You want your team to believe the team is cohesive and we can make a performance. But you can't change what they believe. Can I physically change somebody's belief? No, you can't. It's within. You only can influence their, how they believe. You cannot change what they believe. And then start changing yourself and just slightly edge. So with my little smurfs, I call questions or discussions because I would like to learn 
from you guys anything you have, okay? So I think there's two <coughs> drop sets or drop skills uh, I didn't see up there, which was uh, the DevOps as well as system um, Can you talk more about that or where you group them in? DevOps system means we just start that <laughs> internally because we're using Alka and Pentium, uh, Black Mesh. We have different hosting environments. We don't have, before we don't have like delegate like system main or DevOps, but we do have two developers on staff really interested in DevOps and uh, system mains. And they start to learn all the technology on their own. And we start and give them a little bit of time to get more into the DevOps. Um, it's not a full-time job right now, in, at least in Kina. And we try to work with Pentium, like using their like staging tests to do almost the our work. And uh, our DevOps expert is uh, uh, Gasman learned all by himself. And we have uh, one automatizing person who learned all the automatizing. Those things are something like, uh, as we growing, we start looking to, we try to do a lot of automated uh, tools. And we our co-ops usually is from the program analyst program helping us a lot with servers. And we have, our system is like a, you say, majority they doing backend. And then when we need them, like when doing uh, solar installations or like LDA integrations, that's our system and come in. Um, but we don't have like one person just doing only that. So did that answer your question or? Okay. Yes. You mentioned uh, evaluating code quality for incoming developers. Are there tools or tests you give to developers to see how good a developer they are? Uh, test. Uh, you mean like, um, we only take Aqua test <laughs> from, uh, we have a uh, few developer take Aqua test and we had apparently the most, uh, we have uh, three grandmasters um, and those Drupal tests would take, talk about test. Uh, in the beginning when I hired people, I used to let them write a written test. I don't think that's really value how good their coding style which is because just multiple choices. So, and uh, we do the code reviews, and our senior developer will review the commits on the, our, we use Bitbucket, so they will do a pull request and to review the code. Most time, we don't have like a like exam to say, <laughs> besides OCA test, I guess, from the Drupal point of view. So nothing like during the interview process? Interview process, as I said, mentioned earlier, we do have like a written test in the beginning. I kind of not using that recently. I feel like, um, there's a lot of people kind of use similar questions <laughs> about because the interview test usually we mostly for hiring entry levels. In the beginning, we use it's all testing about PHP, HTML, and CSS. It's not really Drupal related, um, Pacific, because most people they just out of school, they don't know enough Drupal yet. Uh, we do that. I find that's not really effective. Uh, so I kind of recently haven't used that for a while. Um, talk about uh, interview. One thing I want to share is. Uh, one time I did a failure, it's called, I did a group interview uh, for a uh, co-op. I thought sometimes interview, every, we have a lot of co-ops uh, in our, every year we at least have one co-op for four months. So three in a year we have three co-ops go through the four months program for the application program. And uh, they'll have a lot of applications from the school. What I thought to save time, I do a group